Welcome to the February 1st issue of TTT Digest. We are living in an era where there is so much demand on our attention. Things are constantly bothering us and diverting us away from the task at hand. There is no question at all that the ability to focus at a single task is a good thing. There is evidence that clearly shows that multitasking is not an efficient way to do things and more importantly, it's very stressful. The question then arises, how do we go about focusing? And according to the author of this piece, he says that there is really no need to do things like withdrawing yourself into the isolation of a hermitage but all you really need to do is to refocus the way you do things and that is you use focus as your default mode and every now and then you take breaks away from it into distraction whereas the way we are tuned to do is the opposite. We are constantly distracted and we are fighting it to get back into focus. Easier said than done I suppose but unless you work at it like anything else you are not going to be able to get there. The internet is no doubt the greatest invention that humankind has seen. It has allowed more people to publish and share their knowledge with very little cost. At any other time in history, there has never been this kind of power given to common people. In the early days of the internet, the process was carried out by first getting the content ready and then sitting with a designer and the two of you would design a structure or an interface through which you could exhibit your own content to the world. Unfortunately, and I notice this all the time, is in the last few years you will notice that websites all look the same. There is a degree of monotony that really brings you to the question, are you in the same site or are you looking at somebody else's efforts and this is largely because today we have the technology and the capability to put up websites literally at the push of a button. The process is completely automated, you require no expertise at all and within minutes you can have sophisticated websites just up and running. So what has now happened is that the designing and building of the interface comes first after which you stuff content into it. Content has been moved to the end of the process and the author claims that this could be a reason why there is so much lack of freshness and creativity in a tool that is inherently extremely powerful and creative. We live in an age of constant anxiety. As human beings we are constantly being pulled by two contradicting forces. We yearn for greatness. Purpose in life, meaning in life and greatness is a very, very important motivation that pushes us into doing what we do in our daily lives. But at the same time, we are also burdened by a chronic propensity for self-doubt. We are never sure that what we have is of value. We are never sure that what we have will be seen as having some purpose by the rest of the world. Those who are able to do this well have something called a presence and that fundamentally is the ability to act from a core of true values. First of all, understanding what you are, what you are deep within you and then being able to act from it. The author of this book, Amy Cuddy, defines it very nicely when she says that presence is when you execute with comfortable confidence and synchrony and you leave with a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment regardless of the outcome and this is important regardless of the outcome you perform because you're absolutely sure this comes from within and you do it with confidence and I typically think of things as like when Elton John plays you can really see a presence and many many other um, people of extraordinary talent. Somebody has come up with a very interesting and curious invention, a patented device that helps you finish your sentences. It's much like 
the autocomplete that we are now so used to seeing in all our messengers and uh, email devices where you start typing and the thing literally reads your mind and keeps putting out suggestions for what you want to say. This person has patented a device which can do it for your voice. In other words, from a background of what it analyzes you as being, it can sort of literally in your ear suggest things that you should be seeing and if you are as old as I am, you would think that, wow, this is a great device because as you get older, you constantly keep forgetting what you want to say or do. Interesting. Needs keeping an eye out for. I really didn't know this until I read this article that humans are the only animals with a chin. I mean, I'm sh that, that's a piece of information that was new to me. And why is this so? And the answer seems to be that basically we don't know, but it could be an adaptation for chewing, speaking, something that only humans do and the rest of the animal kingdom does not. It could be something for you to take things on the chin, as the expression goes, by blocking face blows. Curious, but I don't think that could be the reason. It could be for the need to keep our genes going, to show our sexual superiority, and as we all know, a prominent, well-formed chin is often considered as a, uh, a good thing, as a, as a good thing to have. But we think that it's most likely to be something called a spandrel, which is an incidental feature that just evolved and has no particular benefit or need. This is a YouTube video that you must see whatever else you do. This brilliant teenager has really, really found the way to game the system. And he shows you how, when he needed to travel between two points in England that were an hour and a half apart, the cheapest way for him was to fly through Berlin. Just see the video. It's absolutely a delight. Too many choices, again, are a very, very big aspect of our modern day living. Drucker says that when the history of our time is written, what will be one of the lead items will be the fact that we've had so many choices. Question arises, how do we simplify these things? Uh, all of us really feel a need for simplifying life for acting on Henry David Thoreau's advice to simplify, but how do we go about it? And that could be a real challenge, opting out. And in this regard, there is also a very, very interesting concept called essentialism, where you strip life down to essentials, and I'll talk about it another day. What you see on the left side is the picture of Mark Zuckerberg's wardrobe. The man believes he has many important things to do in life and cannot be bothered by deciding what clothes to wear and his entire wardrobe consists of one color of t-shirt and one color of hoodie. Um, so did Stephen Jobs and I think that's something that we must learn to emulate. Human brain has an internal clock that is absolutely amazing. Its ability to monitor time can be done with a degree of precision that many instruments still can't reproduce. Where does it come from? We don't seem to know, and there is a lot of work going on to try and find out how the sense of time, which when you think about it is again a very abstract concept, how is it built into our brains so effectively? Lastly, before I sign off, another YouTube video that I would very, very uh, strongly urge you to see, and that is a very fascinating clip from Japan where this young man shows you 15 ways in which you can use something as common as a clip binder for a wide variety of very uh, useful day-to-day -day purposes. It's an absolutely amazing video. Please watch it. Thank you very much for watching and for being with us today. There is a lot more at the website www.thinkteachtalk.net where you can get all the feeds from which you can pursue these pieces in depth. You can download PDFs and you can do much, much more. You can look at older presentations. So please uh, log in and take a look. Thank you and have a nice day.